Hi, I'm Jill. And I'm John. And we're the Geezers on the Go. Go, go, go. This episode, we're at Poinsett State Park in South Carolina, a park that's been called both weird and beautiful. The park is near Wedgefield, South Carolina, where the Blue Ridge and Piedmont Mountains meet the coastal plains, creating a unique ecosystem. The campground has 50 sites, about half with water and electric. It also has five cabins and a 10-acre lake for swimming, paddling, and fishing. And there's history lurking. The park is named after Joel Roberts Poinsett, who was both an amateur botanist and a U.S. government spy in the early 1800s. In fact, the popular holiday flower, the poinsettia, is named after him because he imported so many from Mexico to South Carolina. We'll show you Little Levi Lake, which was created by an old grist mill that the CCC uncovered when the park was built in the 1930s. And we'll visit the memorial honoring Revolutionary War hero Thomas Sumter, who later lent his name to the famous fort where the Civil War began. Finally, we'll tour the Swan Lake Iris Gardens with its eight varieties of swans and its talking trees. We're here at Poinsett State Park near Pinewood, South Carolina. We're in site number 13. And this site has water and electric. And this site's not too bad. Some of them are a little close, but <clears throat> we have one of the few sites that have a gravel uh, pad. Most of the other ones have just sand. And here we'll walk around to the other side here so you could see how much space we have. Back here is all trees, so we have not really looking at anybody. There is a person right over here, but decent sight. Lots of squirrelies, and we put down both our mats because all the rocks and stuff. John says we're carpeting the outdoors, <laughs> so. but it's a good sized site and it's very level. We didn't have to do anything. It's a little older park, and the roads could use a little TLC, but we'll take a quick walk around and uh, see what's what. The campground right here, I says, right near where the uh, dump station is, and we did a, a was a self check check in in this place. You just came and got your site; it was already tagged on the on the post. I don't know if they do that all the time, but they did it here. Maybe it's the winter, the end of February. But I would say the sites that are the outer loop that are um, maybe a little bit, well, maybe not bigger, but you got a little more trees. Like that was site number one, site number two. We're pretty full, which I'm a little surprised for the middle of the week. But from what I've heard, it's a very popular place. It's a little bit of a trek off from I-95. It's a about it, almost 25 miles in from the road. And, uh, but it's a nice little park. This one, here's number three. That's a little rocky going up that site. But it's kind of odd. It looks like they decided to fix some and not others. Some have gravel, some don't. And there's two camp posts here. I'm not sure why for a smaller park. But here's number four. That one's not too bad. And there's a little bigger guy up there. That's number seven. And then we have a number six. And there's us down at the end. We're just going to take a little walk down the road here. So we're probably about in the middle of this loop. This loop does all have a water and electric, and there's another loop that just has uh, no hookups. There's all types of rigs here, 
It probably wouldn't be great for a really big one because some of the sites are kind of short. And I don't think there's many 50 amp hookups here. They must, they must have added this loop later because ours is number 13 and then there's 14. And we go to 21, 22, 23 back here. And then on the other side, it starts back <laughs> the lower numbers. But this, this loop leads to um, the, the sites that don't have um, any hookups. So 23 over there looks like it'd be a nice site. It has the water and electric, and this looks like one of the only pull-throughs right here. That wouldn't be too bad. And then it leads out over here. There's some, you can go out to the trails down this road and it gives a little map here of where you are and where you're going. Right across there again from site 22, this is that little pavilion and we'll just take a quick walk inside. It looks like if you're having a party or some kind of a get together, there's some tables in here, there's electric, there's lights, they even give you a little podium stand and a big fireplace at the far end. So you could have a good sized thing and it looks like, oh, I just noticed something. To come in here and you could play. <laughs> There's a big checkerboard. And I will come back later and play some checkers. And as you make your way around, this is, I said, the loop again. It just has the uh, water and electric. But they kind of need to fix the roads a little bit. They're kind of narrow and sandy, and that's one of the complaints I read from other campers that the road here could use some improvements. And I'm not real sure what this big area over here, maybe just for playing, looks like they might have a big fire pit out there. Yeah, if we come around here, these are the inner loop sites. There's 19. And there's a van camper there. I think you can see there's not real super big rigs, but there are a couple of bigger ones. We're over 30 feet, so we fit pretty good. But some of them might be a little tight to get into. I would say like 19 to try and back into this. You don't have a lot of wiggle room. It's just a little older park, but very, I say, quaint. The dump station here is conveniently located right as you exit the park, so if you had to um, use your poop trolley or whatever to a dump, it wouldn't be too hard of a trek from the campground, which is right here. Okay, this is another loop here in our campground. I think most of these are primitive. Well, they do have, uh, I guess they have water or some of them do, most of them do, or all of them do, but they don't have any electric, to, so all they got back here is water. There's a nice uh, pull-through tent site. You don't see too many of those. And there is a bathhouse over here. Yeah, they have a bathhouse. Not a lot of people in here. Actually, this road is now gravel here, so it's not... This road might actually be the be a better road than the one that goes through the uh, hookup sites. But these are nice campsites. These are... They look level. Very nice. Uh, I mean, you could, you could back a trailer in here, but most... Most of the people who have trailers are going to want to have at least uh, have electric. Near the entrance to the park, there's a road you can turn off and uh, goes up to the cabins. And this is one of them. Nice looking little cabin perched on a sort of an overlook back there. Very wooded area. Very bumpy. <laughs> and very bumpy. You got a all dirt roads back here, so Joe's going to make a sweeping left-hand turn here and zoom on down the 
Well, you don't zoom anywhere back here, but and there's another of the little cabins. I think there's four actually back here. Four cabins. Nice swing. Look, looks like uh, this one at least has got a fireplace. Got a little uh, swinging uh, bench out front. Looks like it has a big grill for the summer. Yeah. The older campground. It's a, it's kind of pretty. It's got lots of trees. I know. I, it seems to be the favorite of a lot of local right, people yeah. here. Um, it has it it has you know good sites. It has uh, its charm, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, about half the sites are graveled. About half the sites have water and electric. Like half, a lot of there's a lot of sand here and a lot of <laughs> rutted roads. The roads here need a little TLC. Well, the, even the even the paved road that comes up to right. the campground is so narrow that you, and it's a two-way road, so yeah, it's it, one of those where you gotta kind of <laughs> watch out. If somebody comes the other way, you better, yeah. somebody's got a backup or You better or, hope or they're a something. motorcycle. But on the whole, it's, it's a nice park, and it has a, a nice little lake, and just back beyond the a lake where there's a little visitor center, there's the waterfalls. Yeah, and that's, it's really pretty. There's a, mm -hmm. It was an old mill by the waterfalls there, right, Joe? Yes, they said it was built in, some. there was grist mills there in the 1700s and ran for about 150 years, and then they were abandoned, and nobody knew they were there until the CCC uh, helped uh, build this park, and they found it, and they sort of rebuilt the yeah, waterfalls around it. Yeah, they sort of it. did a little uh, amateur archaeology <laughs> and yeah. uncovered the, uh, the uh, foundation and some of the posts, uh, stone yeah. pillars uh, that... Uh, that comprised the it, and there's one little stone the wheel there that's still there from the from the grinding days but the area there's not it's not I wouldn't say it's a touristy area but you're about like say 20 miles from the town of Sumter which is a kind of a historic town yeah it, it's uh, named after a fellow named Sumter who was uh, <laughs> we know who he is he was a <laughs> revolutionary war hero and, and uh, congressman and yeah congressman and everything and, and yeah. we went to visit uh, his, uh, his memorial. It's a grave site with, with him and his family and um, and he's of course named this Fort Sumter is named after him and also in the town of Sumter we went to visit this um, really cool place called the Swan Lake Iris Gardens Yeah. and it's a big lake it has supposed to be eight different kinds of swans it would have been nice to come in a little warmer weather it's now like just end of february beginning of march and it's supposed to have beautiful irises and and talking flowers. trees <laughs> talking trees you press buttons in these little kiosks talk about the uh what kind of trees they are <laughs> yeah I, I was partial to the myrtle <laughs> <laughs> but it's a nice little park and if you came here you'd probably have a good time we're down at the lake area point seven park and if you happen to have a electric vehicle they have a little charging station here kind of not a little overcast today because it rained all day yesterday and most of the night and oh it also says <laughs> there could be alligators here so I better better be aware I had wondered when we came into this, this park it's called Point Set Park and this Joel Roberts Poinsett, he traveled all over the place and he also traveled to Mexico where he liked this pretty red flower that was grown there, sent him back, and then they officially became known as poinsettias. Wish it was a little nicer day, but you get what you get. And there's the building, the nice little fireplace in there. And this is the lake. I still I've seen a couple of people fishing. So, who knows how good it is, but like I said, it's, it's always a nice day to not catch fish wherever you are. And in season, you could rent kayaks to go out on the lake. I'm sure you could bring your own as well. And there are fish in this lake. There's bass and panfish and who knows what else might be in here. At the edge of the little sandy beach part of this, the lake here, it looks like it, in season, there's a little boathouse down here, looks like they rent paddle boats. Who knows, they might even rent them now if you ask them nicely. It is the March 1st, and it would be a nice little paddle out around the lake. They have some 
paddle boats and they have a couple of row boats maybe you could rent too there's down at the end this area here is called constant mill and they said there was a mills ran through here for something like 150 years dating back to the mid 1700s and you could see some of the remnants here there's a turning stone and some other areas there and it was sort of covered up for a long time until the CCC came in to build the park and revamped a little bit so you could walk down and have the water come through right there. This appears to be part of the foundation of uh, an old building, perhaps the mill that once stood here on this little creek. Obviously been here a while, or lichen and moss growing on the rocks. And here's the waterfall, and the little creek that uh, once helped power this mill. And a little uh, stone footbridge over the uh, creek. Yep, Jill's going to go down there and walk across that slippery little bridge. Sure-footed as an alpaca. It is a beautiful spot, though. Might be the prettiest spot in Point Set State Park. Hello, Jill. to the General Sumter Memorial. It's about 15 miles from our campground in a point set. So it's very famous. There's another town of Sumter near here. And you can hear there's an Air Force base. Here goes a plane right by us. So I'm going to check out what this whole place is. General Sumter was a uh, an American Revolutionary War hero and uh, they called him the fighting gamecock and probably his most uh, important uh, uh, engagement was after the uh, British uh, took Charleston in 1780 mm -hmm. he organized a bunch of guerrilla he, he sort of retreated back into the woods organized a bunch of guerrillas and marched right in and took Charleston mm -hmm. right back from the British Woohoo! quite a thing yeah, <laughs> yeah. No wonder they liked him. And this is, he's buried here, right? Let me read something that uh, General, uh, uh, Colonel Henry Light Horse Harry Lee said about Sumter. He said, enchanted with the splendor of victory, he would wade in torrents of blood to attain it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's something. Let me see. Let's get a picture. And there's what he looks like. There's old Thomas Sumter. And of course, the uh, Fort Sumter, which was made famous by the Civil War a uh, uh, hundred years later, was <laughs> named after him, but he was not around at the time. This is actually his burial place here. Him and it looks like his, his wife are buried. Yeah, well, this right was here. their old homestead, this, yeah. this area. But all that's left is uh, his grave and a few other graves of his family. Yeah, this looks like behind this big memorial here, there's a another grave sites over here. Actually, these are the real grave uh, sites. That other one what we looked at earlier was just sort of a memorial, but this one actually is, he's buried here. And his wife over here. And what is that one? Is that a son? I, I don't know who that is. It's a that's another mm -hmm. Thomas Sumter. So that must be his son because he's born in, born a little later. So Yeah, yeah. But in, in reinvestigating here, this actually, the one that's in the little house here is actually the grave site of his Son's son and wife. Yeah. And maybe, yes, very long name. <laughs> Some French lady. <laughs> Thank you. 
we are in the town of Sumter, and there's a called Swan Lakes and Iris Gardens. I don't think we're going to see many irises, but they're supposed to have the largest thing of different kinds of swans in this park. So here we go. We'll probably see some swans for all. Yeah, I think so. Well, we're making our way down. I see right now we can see a lot of geese, but there looks like a black swan. And we'll go on there and there's a whole bunch of stuff. We'll just get a little closer look. Look at that guy. He's going fast. Supposed to be at least eight different kinds of swans here. There's a big black one coming right at us. Hello there, Swanee. They seem to be congregating over here. Must be some food. Lots of different swans. There's a a bewick swan, a black swan, black neck swan, mute swan, trumpeter swans. There, here comes this guy right here. Come, come see me. Sure, get a good look at a lot of different geese here. This guy is right here, poking at something. And the noisy go gooses in here. Also here they have what they call a talking tree path. This is a gum tree and <laughs> John said, said it sounds like the bear jamboree at Disneyland. Listen. Howdy, I'm <laughs> Sweet Gum. The name comes from my sweet tasting gummy sap. The Mayan Indians burned my sap to make a pleasing incense. My range begins in Guatemala, Central America and continues to Virginia. I'm one of the first trees to colonize abandoned fields. Even though it's the last day of February, February 23rd, in this nice little park, we don't see any irises, but we still have a few of the trees that are just starting to bloom a little bit of color. Spring is on the way. And that was the cue for our swan song here at Poinsett State Park. So, as we head out, we want to thank you for watching, and, as always, we'll see you down the road. Stop! Stop! Stop!